Good morning, afternoon, evening, whatever time of day it is that you are tuning in. Welcome or welcome back to the Lock Knits and Knitting Podcast. My name is Haley. I am a tattooer, crafter, quilter, knitter, etc., etc., from Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania, in the United States. This is episode 15. It is not episode 15. I have an incredibly long episode, which I'm sure if you're this far into the video, you would have seen. This is absolutely going to be well over an hour long. I just have a lot of stuff and a lot of like frizzy things happening. I got a lot of stuff, uh, not in a bad way, more of like an expected kind of treat myself sort of springtime vibe here that I'm just following my heart with. Lately, let me just get into it. I got my salt burn sweater all finished. I actually finished this a few weeks ago. I had filmed, my last episode was all about my quilting projects. Just to kind of take a break, I was in like a sh middle sh medium ground with all of my like works in progress and things like that. Decided to take a little break from the usual content to just go through my quilting projects. And actually the more I think about it, before I even talk about my salt burn sweater, I have a clip of socks quilt that I had finished last time, but I had not yet gifted to her. So I filmed the part of the episode where I wanted to share this finished quilt. So I will just go ahead and insert that now because I've since given it to her and um, it's no longer a surprise. So please enjoy uh, Past Haley talking to you now. All right guys, this is Past Haley talking to you. I just got done filming episode 13 of the podcast. It was the quilting episode. I will put a link to it uh, here. I did a little show and tell of a bunch of quilting projects that I've made in the last couple of months. I had one that I was not able to share with you at this time, like when I was filming it. I figured that it was time to invest like my heart and soul and energy into a really big quilt for sock. So I've been working on this for the last couple of months. It's not anything crazy complicated, but it is large. It's like almost, almost full size. It's like something you can put on your bed. It's not gonna like fit her bed perfectly, but it's just, it's big, it's a big quilt. And I have some funny stories about this, so. Let me just give you a little preview. It's really unwieldy and like large, so please bear with me as I'm trying to like display this. It's not gonna be dignified or cute. Oh my God, it's so heavy. Okay, let's get some close-ups here. We got some Sawtooth Star action. We've got vintage fabric. We've got some beautiful, beautiful quilting. It is just, oh my God. Okay, it's really, really, really heavy. So. Let me tell you about why it's really heavy. So first things first, this is just like a self-drafted quilt pattern. I had in my mind's eye, I really love sawtooth stars. I feel like most people interested in quilting like love a good sawtooth star pattern. And I had a vision of making sock really old timey vibe, sort of like sawtooth star quilt. So I did that. I made, I think they ended up being like 12 inch blocks or they're supposed to be 12 inch blocks. And for the center of each of them, I used alternating antique fabric that came into my stash from a family member of mine, pretty sure last fall. And I've had this and literally as soon as I pulled it out of the box, I said, this needs, I need to make a thing for sock with this. So the two styles of fabric were this, This is like kind of a folksy, like multi print sort of, let me see if I can show you. Um, so each block is like different. There's like a few repeats, but honestly, like they are kind of unique. This is my favorite one. How darling is that? So I had this print and then the second print, which was also just like sending me to another plane of existence was this chicken. Look at this. It's chicken and like, like silver, like silver plate wear just like lost it so cute i thought they were so much fun together they have like the red they have the old timey like folksy kind of vibe to it this is so much fun it's so pretty i finally got this done the quilt top done and i sent it off to be quilted i am still new i talked about it on the last episode but i'm new to like fabrics uh fabric selection 
how fabric is referred to if that makes sense so i picked <laughs> i like sent in all the information i placed the order for this to be quilted with this quilt pattern which like let's just have another moment for it i just love it it's so like elegant i don't know it's like very beautiful i just totally love this thing i place my order and everything and it's great the quilts make it there they're being quilted it's awesome blah 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 box comes back in the mail i'm so excited i'm like oh, i'm gonna open this elliot's quilt was in there i was like i'm gonna quilt everybody's you know i'm gonna finish everybody's quilt whatever no i open this quilt and i picked the wrong backing so instead of having a solid like a plain solid black background um i paid for a minky fabric for the back of this entire quilt is this the most beautiful thing i've ever seen yes of course it is and i can't read it said i sent them an email and i was like i am so stupid like this is beautiful and it's great but like what does the thing say so that i know to like avoid that in the future and it's cuddle it's cuddle fabric so like my brain i'm looking for the word like minky fabric because i know that's an option that they have which is fine and I, it's beautiful and wonderful i did not in a million years put together like the word cuddle with minky fabric obviously at this point i have not yet given the quilt to sock uh i don't think she would ever say to me anyway like oh i hate that but i hope that she i hope that she likes it i hope she genuinely likes it yeah i just really wanted to share about this quilt i'm so proud of it it was so much effort it was just so it's it's big it's like unwieldy yeah i just want to make sure that i filmed this and like pop it into episode 14 so past Haley signing off thank you for listening thank you very much past Haley. i greatly appreciate it so anyway back to knitting content i have finished my saltburn sweater i will stand up and do a little like twisty situation so you can get an idea of the finished product so she's cute we love her let me back up a little bit so i have my linen dress on today I've been getting not only so much wear out of this sweater, but out of this dress too. Like it really is the perfect combo. Who would have thought that all the knitting girlies had figured it out with the linen dress business. This was my little split hem action here that I put into the sweater. I knit the size three. I'm pretty sure I knit the size three. It's on my Ravelry page and also links to everything that I talk about that I deem relevant will be below. But I knit the size three in this sweater. I had actually knit a totally failed gauge swatch for another project and completely abandoned it. Um, I've talked about that on previous episodes, but I had the gauge numbers in front of me and then I kind of sought out the pattern, which is nice. I actually prefer to do it that way. That was like a sign from the heavens that I, sh I shouldn't have even tried to meet my gauge to another pattern. I finished this sweater, size three. It obviously is like has positive ease. I'm not a big like measurer of, this is my like chest measurement. This is how much positive ease. Like I've literally never done that. I just go uh, purely based off of vibes. It worked out great. I've been getting a ton of wear out of it. And I remember talking about this as a whip and saying like, oh, I sure hope that I get some use out of it because things are starting to get warm. Uh, no, that was that was false springtime. We've had not horrible weather, but just rainy, dreary like today. I don't know if you can like hear the rain outside and the outside noises or whatever, but it's like dark and gloomy and it's been that way for a few weeks. So I have been, like I said, getting a ton of wear out of it. It's beautiful. This is totally a beginner color work sweater if that's like something that you've been seeking or that you're after if you are an experienced color work knitter this is probably just like a straight up fun project to do because it's not complex there's like two rows that you have to like carry your floats it's really like nothing crazy but overall i think it reads as like a very uh like sophisticated kind of finished product it looks very like store-bought which i don't hate but the yarn i used was plymouth homestead and again i have talked about this when it was a whip i love this yarn i will be buying more of this yarn for like future erin weight sweater projects it was a total win in my book oh oh my gosh hold on one second i'm so sorry i'm so sorry i'm so sorry i looked behind me noticed that my jar was askew and also noticed I was missing a homegirl. 
chicken darling. Yeah, salt burn sweater, finished, fantastic, love it. Probably will end up putting it away in two weeks, but like I said, I've just gotten so much wear out of it. It's so nice, a lot of compliments. Totally, totally uh, fun project, wouldn't it again? I have a bunch of finished objects. So I have one pair of sock blockers, two pairs of finished socks. So uh, both of them are kind of the same, not kind of, they're exactly the same like formula that I always do. I am a total vanilla sock knitter. Like if I knit socks, they are vanilla. I had an episode, <laughs> literally an episode, a few months ago. Yeah, I think months at this point, a few months ago where I knit some like incredibly basic like color work, like stripe one by one color work like truly nothing crazy socks and it was horrible i did not enjoy the process the socks are fine they've kind of like started to fit weird i know i said i was going to give an update about them i will like put a picture of the socks i'm talking about in here it seems like the one by one color work has shrunk or like kind of like cinched up in a way that is uh, like unpleasant just overall like wouldn't do it again i still wear these socks all the time but I just don't, I don't like love them the way I like love, love all my other socks. So went back to the basics with how I usually knit socks. I do 60 stitches on a US one and my gauge is kind of tight. Like I've heard from other people that I've gifted socks to and everything that overall, like they are very tight fitting socks, but after you wear them for like 30 minutes, they kind of like form to your feet and they don't ever get that like bunchy, slouchy sock situation. I hate that, I hate that so much. So for me, it's way better and way more worth it to have like a very fitted sock and my 60 stitches on a US one is perfect for my foot. So I've had this tube, I knitted a very long tube, uh, which is, I wouldn't say a favorite, but it's one of my like top ways to knit socks. Knit an enormous tube and then cut it apart and do afterthought heels, toes, cuffs. I like adding in the the afterthought everything because I I don't love the idea of doing like heel turn, heel flap, gusset, like all of that stuff. Like socks for me are truly a have fun travel project, like simple, simple knitting. So I had this giant rainbow tube that was sitting in my stash. And I remember last year I had made them knowing that it was gonna be like a taller pair of socks. And I'm pretty sure I had finished them like right before summertime or like at the end of spring because I remember saying, I have no use right now for like tall socks. So I'll just throw this tube in my bin and like deal with it later. I have these socks here. They are so cute and fun. The heels, toes, and cuffs were just some scrap yarn that I dug out of my stash. They have a little Stellina in them, like not too crazy, but I like the speckle with the stripes. This is a different sock yarn to me. Usually I'm like totally standard merino nylon 75 25 80 20 like whatever this is misty alpaca yarn and this is a blend of alpaca merino nylon some kind of like it has a bunch of different fiber content to it i wash and dry my socks in the dryer there is a lot of stuff that i'm totally fine to hand wash I just wear too many knitted socks and like honestly it's the reality of everything so i wash and dry my socks in the washing machine and the dryer i have not worn these yet because i wanted to show them in their totality on the podcast and like to be honest with you i am not confident about how these are going to wash up i am a little scared i truly don't even know why i bought this yarn i think i bought it in a way that i was like too excited about the color not like thinking with my brain so we'll see in any case like i said i wanted to show them on the podcast in case they turn into a felted nightmare but i think it should be fine it should be fine i do want to go on the record because i i have spent a lot of time finding like my perfect sock situation but i really wanted to perfect my afterthought heel because again like this is the only thing standing between me and having a perfect small portable like travel project and i know that the afterthought heel does not fit everybody i don't think i have particularly remarkable feet in that like i have a high or a low or like a crazy instep or anything like i don't have a difficult time finding shoes you know whatever I decided to continue to add rows when I pick up for the afterthought heel. I would usually knit like between like five to seven rows 
before getting into the decreases to have less tension overall on on this part right here. I guess that would be the gusset maybe. I don't really know. I actually have moved up since then. I knit 10 rounds even before I move into the decreases on the heels and that seems to be the perfect fit for me. So I would say if you really want to make afterthought heels work for you and you're having that problem where like the heel just feels like it's pulling, like it's very tight when you put it on your foot, give it a go because 10 rounds is, it's kind of a lot, but it really, it looks nice. It's less tension, again, on this area than some of the socks that I've knit in the past. It just is a good fit, it really works. So, all that to say, this has become like my new formula for sock knitting. The only other thing I did differently on this that I won't do again, actually, is I did a three by three rib here at the, um, at the cuff. So, I don't think, and this is the reason I'm never gonna do it again, because I don't think that you can tell a difference. I don't think it like made a difference in how these fit or how they look. I just don't even like, they just look like two by two to me. And there's something about like autopilot ribbing that my brain is always like two by two by two by two by two. So when I try to jump into this three by three nonsense, I kind of get a little like, Ugh, you know, like I'm more likely to miscount my ribbing stitches when I do this. So that was an experiment. I don't think they look any different. Won't do it again. Do a little scene change here and I'll show you my second pair of socks. Who is she? She has two finished pairs of socks. I'll tell you what, I opened all the windows in my house. It is a little warm today. Yay, pair of socks number two. I love these. So this is Deep Stash. I think I got this yarn from, I know for a fact I got it from Rags Fiber Art back in Pittsburgh, but I'm pretty sure I got it like three years ago, maybe. One of my last yarn crawls in Pittsburgh, I snagged this. This was a sock set from the Spun Bunny. The Spun Bunny is like hands down one of my favorite yarn dyers ever. I just absolutely love everything that they do. Just love it, love it. So this was i think a halloween sock set i'm pretty sure there was some cutie pie name for it. it was like halloween night or something and then i just grabbed some i'm pretty sure this is river rat yarns from my stash from my like bin of minis and skeins i've already wound up and everything but yeah these are just cute crazy crazy variegated socks same thing Still knit a tube. Um, I wanted to use as much of this yarn as I could. I ended up getting bored, so I cast them off early, but I did my usual like toe up tube. I actually knit these in tandem. Sometimes, depending on the yarn content or like how and when I'm casting them on, I will knit one enormous tube and then cut it in half. This one, I started this project at home and I took this when we were traveling to Vogue Knitting Live in New York City. This was my train knitting and everything. So I actually split this up into the two skeins because it came in two separate hanks. Um, and I knit them kind of in tandem, which is like really my preferred method. I did a little one by one cuff. And honestly, I think this might be my favorite. More favorite than the two by two ribbing. It's slightly more laborious, but it's not like, I don't feel deterred from doing a one by one cuff. And then the only other thing that I'll say about the way I've been knitting socks is the last couple months of sock knitting, I have done the surprisingly stretchy bind off, super, surpri I'll put a link to it, but you guys know what I'm talking about. I can't remember what it's called. Someone on some podcast sometime was talking about, I need a stretchy bind off for my socks, but the one that I'm talking about, it does give you like a lot of flare and a little more bulk kind of around like that finished edge. So someone had recommended do the stretchy bind off method, but only do that for the purl stitches. You can see a little bit of like the texture of this. This bind off method involves doing some like yarn over situation. So I don't think anyone would really notice. Arlo just ran up the steps. I don't think anyone would notice. Um, I personally don't care. It doesn't add any like weird bulk for me that would like deter me from doing it in the future. So that's a lot of talk about a lot of socks. I think socks are just one of those things that are so incredibly like personal to everybody. There's no 
one hard and fast way to knit socks or to come up with a perfect sock formula or anything like that. I've been, I've, I really feel like I've perfected like my sock fit and knitting process and product and I've been knitting for 18 years. So <laughs> it takes a while, but when you find it, it really works. So those are my finished objects. I have two quilt tops I wanna show. I'm actually gonna show those now because I never know when I show a quilt top, if I'm gonna see the actual like finished quilt, if I'm gonna have it to show on here again. Sometimes I forget, I don't know. So I'm just gonna show them now. Penny is Nate's daughter. Nate is my boyfriend. Penny is one of his daughters. She is turning 10 next month in April. And I made her a quilt last year. I will put it up here. Um, it was my second quilt I ever made. It was like a twin sized patchwork, nine patch, I think, quilt and she loves it. I was so surprised, and I think I talked about on a podcast, maybe it was a prickly stitch, I guess, if it was last year. I was so surprised by like how much she actually like loved this thing, and you guys know how it is, like giving handmade things to a child, most of the time they just, you know, that's fine, that happens. But she loved it so much, I knew that for her birthday this year I wanted to make her another quilt. This one was a little bit more complex of a pattern for me, but smaller in scale overall. And I actually got a book for Jelly Roll quilt patterns. And I think it's so funny because when I think about how I use like actual physical patterns, books, printouts, like um, printouts of PDFs and things like that, when it comes to knitting, crocheting, and like yarn crafts, I, my patterns are collecting dust. There's a few things, you know, like I have, um, I just got that strange brew book. There's a few things like that that are more like a recipe sort of things that I do use all the time. But it, when it comes to like one pattern printed out or like in a, even a book of knitting patterns, like I just don't get use out of them in that way. But it seems like for quilting, I am a new quilter, it seems like buying patterns in books is financially the most sound option. You get so much for like, so, such a small price. So anyway, long story short, I have bought two knitting books in the past like month for I think like 12 or $13 or something and you get so many patterns. So I bought this book I bought a jelly roll for Penny. Um, Nate and I went and picked out some fabric together, which was very sweet. He loves to like be involved in the quilting process. Last year, I remember he helped me like baste the quilt sandwich and everything um, for Penny's quilt, which was very sweet and I appreciated his help a lot. So without further ado, this is Penny's quilt top. Oh, she is cute. I love it. So this pattern, I actually, I have the book over on my bookshelf. I am trapped under a mountain of things right now and I'm not gonna go up to get it, but I know that the name of the quilt pattern is Sparkling Gemstones. I will put the link to the book in the description box. I think I got the Jelly Roll book at Joanne Fabrics. Like, like I said, very recently. It's, I don't think, a book that's difficult to find. But I just love it. Let's do a little moment here for the fabric. This is a Ruby Star Society jelly roll called, oh, it's over there. Um, I'm pretty sure it's called First Light. And it was a collaboration line of different fabrics and stuff, but I thought these were so stinking cute and fun. And Nate actually picked out the jelly roll at Stitch Central in Philadelphia. We went to their grand opening the day that they opened their new location and we got this jelly roll and it was all, you know, wrapped up in like plastic and everything. So we were going off of, again, like total vibes and what we could see from the outside. And then, you know, when you turn the jelly roll to the side, you can see like all the colors kind of spiraled together. So we went based off of the colors and the prints ended up being so cute and fun. Kind of florally. Penny's a funky girl. She likes these like bright colors and everything. So I got the jelly roll and then I needed, I think like, I think I bought three yards. I'm pretty sure I only needed two yards of this uh, background fabric. I just think it's so cute. So cute. So I'm pretty certain I'm gonna quilt this at home. I have the backing and the batting cut. It's honestly just been like a matter of time when like I have enough time to do the quilting and Penny is also out of the house because I do want to keep it like a surprise for her. But 
yeah, she's cute. Isn't that cute? I just love it. So this top, I'm pretty sure is, if I'm thinking of the right dimensions, I have it all written down, but it's really not that important. I'm pretty sure this one is 57 by 75-ish. So it's a throw blanket, but it's kind of big. She is turning 10. She's nearly as tall as I am, um, but she's still got like little legs and stuff. So it should be the perfect size for her to bundle up with and everything. Um, I don't see any reason why I wouldn't be able to show this when it's all done. So um, if I have it on the next episode and it's all finished, I will report back. But I just wanted to show this because it's just so cute. It really didn't take that long. I haven't done many complex quilt tops that take more than a few straight days of piecing together. So that's the first quilt top I finished. And then the second one is actually, if you can believe it, this is the first quilt that I've decided to keep for myself. So if you follow me on Instagram, I just posted uh, March 31st, uh, just the other day, was my one year quilting anniversary. And one year ago, I finished my first quilt ever. I'll put in pictures and stuff, but it was a patchwork quilt for my nephew Henry. He's gotten a ton of use out of it. I, I'm pretty sure it's held up well and everything. And it started this whole like crazy barrage of quilting projects and it's just, you know how it goes been downhill ever since. In the last year, meaning quilting year, not like in 2023 alone, but in the last year from March 31st to now, I've made 26 quilts. I'm pretty sure this is my 27th quilt or it will be when it's finished, but I'm very proud of that. I spend a lot of time quilting for other people, not in a weird way, but just because I love to make things and put colors together and everything. And like the process is so fun for me and the thing about gifting quilts is that they're so much easier to take care of than like a knit or like a fiber art project. Just find myself like whipping these things up and then sending them out. And I decided to start, you know, with, with my one year of quilting in mind, I had realized that my scrap bin, which again, it's this one. Yeah. One of these bins back here was my like scrap like crumb quilt bin and my cup was overflowing and I was like, oh, I'm probably due for another crumb quilt. I've like done so many projects in the last couple like months and everything that it, it really started to like compound. And I haven't made a crumb quilt since September, August or September of last year. And I really have done so much since then. So I decided to bust out the crumb quilt bin and oh wow did i ever i decided to put all my crumbs together kind of by color and i made eight and a half inch by eight and a half inch squares or blocks i guess i pieced random things together some of them are like crazy and haphazard some of them are not and then after all the eight and a half inch squares were done i went into my jelly roll strip my two and a half inch strip bin and i sort of did like a i don't know what the right word for it is but like a framing like i i framed the top and bottom and then the sides to kind of square up all these blocks and i kept all the blocks like themed to a color like a color story and each block ended up being 12 and a half inch square and that's how this next mistake was made. I actually was wondering if this was going to be big enough for a throw blanket. For some reason, the eight and a half inch squares looked a lot smaller than I think they actually were. And then I put the, the framing two and a half inch strips along the edges. And I don't know if I've ever worked with quilt blocks that were 12 and a half inches. Like it was a really big block size. And then I ended up making uh, 48 of them. So this quilt is six blocks wide by eight blocks long, and it ended up being like a bedspread size. So I was gonna keep this quilt anyway, just because it, I don't wanna give someone like my scraps, you know? I don't know how to describe it, but I just didn't wanna give someone my scraps, and it turned out insane. So I'm gonna back up and I'll do like the big reveal. I'm very proud of this quilt. So give me one second. So she is crazy, 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 crazy. You know, this is, 
This is a lot of fabric. And if, if each block, oh, I just love it. If each block is 12, let's just, they were 12 and a half inch blocks, so they're 12 inch like square after they're sewn up and everything. 12 times six is 72 inches across and then 12 times eight is, what is that, 96? It's big, it's, it's, I would say bigger than a throw blanket, so I am gonna use it as like a, bedspread situation um, for my bed upstairs, but it's crazy. It's wacky. It's scrappy. I love it. I would love like a really nice photo with this quilt top. I don't often employ Nate to uh, take photos for me, but I am sensing, I'm sensing a photo shoot for this one. But yeah, this was just so much fun. Like this to me, is my favorite type of quilting. Scrappy, multicolored, loud, kind of obnoxious, you know, like just love to see it. Um, I sent this picture to our crafting group chat last night and Gail said the way that these colors are arranged uh, should makes your brain feel good or something and I totally, totally agree. So many like projects, memories of these projects. Um, some of this was like the first rounds of fabric that I bought, which I think is really cute and special. Some of this is really expensive fabric. Some of it is not, and that's fine too. But I just thought, you know, what a way to celebrate my quilt anniversary by doing some scrappy, crazy quilting. I think in the spirit of this being so crazy, I am going to quilt it at home and I'm going to do just like a I don't want to say plaid, like straight line, straight line quilting. I think it should be nice and lofty and fun. This was also interesting to figure out how much fabric I have by color. So I was very surprised at like my results, I guess you could call it. I only have one purple block in this whole thing, like solidly purple. I think I have the pinky purple one somewhere, but like only one purple block. I had a very hard time finding green fabric in my stash and also like navy, like darker blue, which is interesting. I like. I just wasn't expecting that. Colors that I have a lot of, definitely black, no surprise there. Um, yellow, I had a ton of yellow fabric and I have a lot of red and that actually like doesn't surprise me. I'm going through like a warm color kind of phase right now, but sorry, I just like keep holding it up and showing it at different angles. I just think it's so fun. There's threads everywhere. You know how it goes. That was that. And then also to celebrate my quilt anniversary, I bought a new sewing machine. I was just having some sort of episode. Okay. <laughs> Not like literally an episode, but you, you guys know, you know how it is. Some days you just have like an itch you need to scratch. And I had an itch and I was out running errands on Saturday last week. And there's a tiny little like sewing shop where Sock and I have taken our machines to get serviced. Sock has bought her sewing machine there. Every time we go there, there's like the sweetest little old lady. She looks like my grandma, which is probably how she got me to spend so much money there. She's so cute, so sweet, so nice. And I went in, cause I was around, you know, I was around the area and I was like, oh, I'll go take a look, I'll go check it out. She just was like, what do you need? And I said, lady, you're so cute. I have a tiny sewing machine. I made 26 quilts and she was like, okay, got it. Here's what you need. And she just took me right up to the front of the store and showed me the Janome Memory Craft 8200 and I bought it. <laughs> so I got this gigantic sewing machine. I'll put in pictures. Um, I also have a picture of my new sewing machine next to my old sewing machine. And I keep using this comparison because it feels um, like very apt, but the old sewing machine feels like a tiny sailboat and this new one looks like a yacht. It is so beautiful. I'm not even mad about how much money I spent because honestly, I would like to be buried with this sewing machine. It is so incredible, worth every penny. My sewing, ex I'm just like looking over at it right now. My sewing experience has been so 
wonderful. There's so much throat space. There's an automatic thread cutter. I'm living in 2024, feeling good. There's auto tension. There's all the stitches I want because plot twist, I did a little applique work. Uh, not on this quilt, just like some scraps on the side. But yeah, I was between getting like a like a Juki TL 2010, you know what I'm talking about, straight stitch only sort of like workhorse piecing, like sewing machine. And I just, I really honestly felt like I couldn't live without a zigzag stitch. I couldn't live without like the option to do applique in the future. So this machine is like fully loaded. It's so amazing. I know I just joked about it like two seconds ago with the automatic thread cutter, but for real, I have saved so much thread from having this thread cutter. It's crazy. And like, I guess when I think about it on this scale, you know, each one of these is the seam. On my old sewing machine, I had a brother CS720, like a introductory machine from Joanne Fabrics. It was very small. And there was no like thread cutter or anything like that. So every time I would finish a seam, unless I was doing chain piecing, which I always try to do like as much as I can, but sometimes you just can't. Every time I would cut a seam, I would have to pull, like pull it out to reach the manual thread cutter like on the back of the machine. And even though that sounds like not a big deal, and it's really not, I like obviously functioned on the thing for a couple years, like without an automatic thread cutter. Every single time you do that, you're pulling out like four or five inches just to reach the thread cutter of thread. So I've noticed like I have been using my sewing machine nonstop since Saturday. Yeah, Saturday when I bought it. Today is, what's today? Today is Tuesday. I have changed my bobbin twice. Like it is just a significant difference, like a totally significant improvement. Just a really nice feature that kind of seemed like when I was doing sewing machine shopping, it kind of seemed almost a little extra you know, like, but I was like, oh, I just want an automatic thread cutter. And it moves things along very quickly. It keeps everything tidy. So all of these small little, like, of course now I can't find any, but there's some blocks like this one. Look at this. There's some blocks like this where like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm moving and shaking. I'm piecing all this stuff together. Like I can't stop every single second and like trim the ends, you know, like while I was piecing them. So that there's no tiny threads to cut, like none of that at the end. It's just like a beautiful, wonderful thing. I'm just so excited about it. It's really improving like my overall like sewing quality of life, I guess you could say. So just so happy, beyond happy. I really do think I will have this thing for the next however long. There's like a 20 year guarantee from Janome, two years of free service at the sewing store. So just could not have asked for a better result. I feel like if you are like me and you're kind of transitioning between like my basic first time sewing machine and like looking into something a little more like robust, there is never gonna be like a clear picture of what you want. This particular sewing machine that I got did not even cross my mind. Um, Janome honestly like did not even cross my mind while I was doing like all my like internet researching, talking to people and everything. And there was one person on Instagram, you know who you are, who um, responded to my story when I was talking about what kind of sewing machine to buy and everything. And she had this exact machine that I got. And as soon as I posted the picture that I got this new one, she was like, yeah, I got it. I was like, yeah. So that's really wonderful. I'm hoping to do the quilting on those, uh, both of those quilt tops in like the next week or two weeks or something. Penny's birthday isn't until like mid-April, so I got a little time there, no worries. Oh my God, I'm editing this video. What is that Pittsburgh accent? What is that Pittsburgh accent? I got a lot of time, no worries. That's it for quilting. I do have one whip. I actually have two whips. The first whip is just a pair of like socks that I've cast on. I'm in this like sock phase. I'm on this journey, whatever. I'm not even gonna share my travel socks, like just, Moving forward, I know no one cares. I'll share them when they're finished, but I always talk at great length about them when they're finished anyway, so like whatever. But I do have a knitting whip and it is living in my Loch Ness bag. This Easter egg bag was in my shop for like two years and no one bought it. And it was like one of my last things in my Etsy shop before I like 
sold everything that was left in it and i was like you know what i'll just take this bag because no one wants it it's got this like retro like 90s era fabric on the inside that i stole from my mother's fabric stash many years ago uh, but yeah i just love it i love the love the easter egg vibe but i cast on the shift yeah i think that's it that's it's just that the shift it is the cowl in andrea mallory's like shift shift shawl shift night shift blah, 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 you know what i'm talking about series of patterns and i will show it to you before i make my remarks this oh my god it looks insane i love it so this is the shift cowl um i guess this i have not like held it up in any way to myself to see what it's gonna look yeah it goes like this um it's so fun it kind of looks nickelodeon-y don't even talk to me about that documentary yes i watched it crazy and i love it and i think i think this is going to be a really great finished object i am so sick of knitting on this i hate this i hated knitting the shawl i'm not really sure what i was thinking when i like cast this on i think it was that the yarn spoke to me and like wanted to be this thing which is fine whatever this pattern is miserable i'm so over it i'm so over it and you know what that's probably on me i'm not a big what do i want to say like sit down and read it kind of pattern lady i'm more of like a stockinette in the round you know kind of gal this is just it's so miserable to knit on i have to have the pattern open i can't just count it on like my row counter i have to have my notebook out cross off each individual row i can't really like multitask while i'm doing it and it's not that the actual pattern itself is hard it's that each end because you're like shaping this at the same time that the stitch pattern is coming together each end is its own increase here don't increase here in this section in this section we're doing slip five slip four slip what like it's just it's so annoying i'm so sick of it i just want to be liberated from this stupid thing there's seven sections can you tell that i'm like counting how long until this thing is over there's seven sections i'm on section five yeah i'm pretty sure i'm on section five uh it's just like honestly miserable i'm happy to have the finished product it's cool i'm over it a uh, yarn is very beautiful so it's there's no way that this color is accurate this is like one of those colors that's gonna make me look like a stick of butter when i put it on and i know it and that's fine the yarn is fun the contrast <laughs> the contrast color is actually a hand spun yarn from sock there's her, her little guy um she spun this yarn it's glorious it was a nitty and color braid with like just the right amount of variation to it it is just absolutely stunning and then i'm actually holding two yarns together which is also totally contributing to how much i hate knitting on this project because i have three balls of yarn that are like constantly getting tangled so i'm holding these two together this was a sock blank knit by my knit <laughs> dyed by my friend megan who is rainbow cake cat this is fiber stash dye works in their surrey base it's like highlighter yellow standard whatever and these two come together to make this like highlighter yellow sitch really think the more i look at this this does not look good on me that's okay this is my whip it's fine maybe if i use like the actual like color shift properties of the yarn that is called for i would be having a better time but like to be honest with you i'm balling on a budget trying to bust through my stash what i don't need to do is acquire six gains of spin cycle you know that's my whip i'm trying so hard to just be diligent about it and work on it i do think that the reason i have two quilt tops is because this is the alternative for me and it's just like supremely not fun so you know it is what it is i do love that i got to use some hand spun yarn sock is a phenomenal spinner like she totally just picked up spinning as a hobby and was like i'm a perfect uh yarn spinner now which is great i love it i love uh reaping the rewards of her manual labor i definitely am lacking in the transitional pieces when i think about winter versus like summer spring fall knitting 
I do not have, I don't think I own any cowls. I'm pretty sure all the samples of like patterns I've written are gone now. I don't think I have any of them. This will be nice to have. I just want it to be done. It's very mesmerizing though, but I'm over it. And then my last thing that I wanna talk about here is stash acquisitions. And you're probably like, dude, when are you gonna stop buying stuff? I don't know, I'm working on it, okay? I'm working on it. But here's what happened. Nate wanted to go see Dune 2 in IMAX. We drove to Philly to see Dune 2 in IMAX. And is there an IMAX theater closer to us? Probably, I don't know. I just let the man do whatever he wants. I honestly, I love an excuse to like just sit in the car with him for a few hours, have like an adult trip, you know? Um, so I wasn't mad about it. So we went to Philly and Nate being the absolute honey that he is said, you know, when we go to Philly, is there any yarn stores that you would want to stop at? Yes, of course there is. It actually ended up being the first day of the greater Philadelphia yarn crawl, which was so exciting. It was very like, oh, I'm meant to be. I've never been to any other yarn crawl other than the Pittsburgh yarn crawl, which is like two weeks. There's a million stores to go to. They're all spread out all over the place. And like, obviously we weren't gonna hit all these yarn stores. So I just picked one yarn store, totally at random. I like punched in the movie theater address and then found like typed in all the yarn store names. Like I literally just went down the list of yarn stores until I got to one that was like semi on the way. And the yarn store that I ended up at was Stitch Central. And actually Stitch Central was having their grand opening of their new location the day that we were gonna be down there. So I was like, oh, this is perfect. How nice. It looks like they sell fabric too. Oh my God. I'll put in some pictures. This place is insane. It was so beautiful. It was the most like gorgeous, open concept, funky, like just so incredible. It was not that they sold a little bit of fabric. They sell a ton of yarn and a ton of fabric. It was legit amazing totally like right place right time like meant to be and i spent a lot of money i spent a lot of money at stitch central and i don't care because life is short i'm 30 and i just don't care you know and that's just fine so i'm gonna go through what i showed you half of this is quilting half of this is yarn stuff all 100 percent very exciting but no particular order i'm literally just grabbing out of my moon and yarn craft room bag this has been sitting up on the yarn shelf uh since we went which would have been the i'm pretty sure it was march 14th was the first day of that and uh, i've been so excited to dig into this i'm so i'm so excited so first things first i got this this is my first layer cake guys my first layer cake so my mom is crafty extraordinaire she is like the person who got me into and encouraged crafting and everything and her best friend who is my godmother is a quilter and so i've been around quilting and quilts my entire life and everything it was an inevitability that i was going to end up being a young quilting gal myself so i wanted to make my mom a quilt and this fabric was just it's totally my mom my mom is like antique collector weird folksy folk art vibe you know what i mean this is just like it literally could be made for my mom so this is the back this is all the prints and the patterns the bunnies just sent me to another plane of existence i love i just love it this is like very expensive layer cakes are very expensive it turns out but it just is so nice so this is hop hop hooray by riley blake designs i have been eyeing up patterns for a layer cake i haven't found one that i'm like 110 percent stoked on yet but this will be a throw for my mom for her birthday her birthday is in the beginning of june so i have a ton i'm actually looking at it right now i got a bunch of fabric on sale that was the wide cut quilting cotton in like shades of red so i think if i need a contrast color it's like literally right over there staring at me and that'll be fine but yeah love it that was awesome in their fabric situation they had one yard cuts just kind of like bundled up like in a big bin organized by like color and stuff and i can't think of a more susceptible way for me to like 
be exposed to one yard cuts of fabric. So I got all three of these. They were not like together, but after I held them up, I was like, these go together really well. I have like clearly have um, a vibe, but look how sweet. So there's this little, let me just do one at a time here. This one I think is the one that spoke to me first with the little house. Oh my God, I just love it. Oh, it's so cute. So super colorful, a lot of stuff to like go off of here. And then I got this yellow. I really love yellow fabric as we've discussed earlier. I do think going through a yellow thing right now and that's cool. And then this one, which at first I thought was just some like cutie pie floral stuff. But no, look, there's little scissors. Crafty. So like all three of these go together so well. I might try to find like a three yard quilt that I could make with these because they're so pretty. Really want to keep them like together as a family. So um, one yard cuts of each one of those and then the rest is yarn. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna hold this on my lap. Oh my God, these are so pretty. Okay, so first things first, I told you I've been on a sock bender. I knew I was on a sock bender and I've never seen this yarn before. And again, yellow, like I'm having this yellow, green, blue phase. Look at this fun yarn. So I've never seen this before. This is superba, hottest socks ever. It's a four ply. It definitely feels like a little like scratchy sock yarn, which I don't hate. It looks crazy. This is apparently what it makes up like. I don't know. Just absolutely nuts though. I love it. I think these are gonna be really cool, funky, weird, like color block socks. This is 100 grams. Price tag is actually over the fiber content. So it's a woolly sock yarn. It looks wacky and cool. Um, this might be something that I knit as one giant tube and then find out how and where to cut it. I don't know, but love that. And then I got, speaking of things I've not seen before, I got four of these skeins. They're little. They're cute. Look how fun. Uh, these, I've been thinking about doing like a color work yoke with all these. I have some stunning white woolly fingering weight yarn. It would make a lovely sweater. These are Universal Yarn Merino Mini Neons. And it's 109 yards, 7525 Superwash merino and nylon but just kind of like regular standard fiber content it's just the colors they were all together in the same bin and i was like "Ooh, love you those are adorable no plans for those but they were small and cute oh i've needed a new tape measure my chicken shaped tape measure rest in power has died many months ago and i never found a replacement i don't want a boring tape measure i want a funky one so i found him look how cute oh i love him and then you just boop his little nose and it comes back so nothing crazy there just cute and then i got one skein that i think is also going to be a pair of socks because it's totally nuts i have no idea what what else i would use this for but i also do want this in a pair of socks look at this look at that look at that clown color oh i just love it it looks insane i'm obsessed this would be so cute i really like to wear these like all black outfits with the crazy socks i've been on the hunt for some clear rain boots do i need them no but i want them they've been on the list for a while so this is ridiculous hand dyed yarn i've definitely worked with this yarn before i got it a skein of it back in Pittsburgh, I think. This is the Addy Socks Fingering Weight 4 Ply. It's 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon. The colorway is Unicorn Barf. Couldn't agree more. Super fun, super crazy, perfect for socks. I really love when I cannot figure out how on earth something is gonna knit up. That like just really scratches an itch for me. I have no idea what these are gonna look like. I am so excited, I cannot wait. And then my last purchases were two skeins of ridiculous yarn, same 
dyer and everything. This is like also probably like my one of my new favorite dyers. Again, I've knit with them before, but it's been many years and just the, it seems like the more I see of this yarn dyer's work, the more I'm like, oh my God, you get me. This is everything I've ever wanted, blah, blah, blah. I got two skeins of this. I really want this to be like a summer top that I can wear with my linen dress or with, I bought two more linen skirts. This is crazy, crazy town. I just love it. So same base. This is called Happy Dance, the colorway. Mm, I just love it. It's so cute. Really, like I said, just kind of jive in with like the warm tones, warm colors and everything. Orange does seem to be a color that I gravitate towards when it comes to like yarn, fabric and things like that. So that's interesting. That's a something. Just love it. I love how crazy it is. I wouldn't mind like a super wacky short sleeved cropped shirt out of something this not so. Um, it's just really like fun and bright. You'll see me coming from a mile away. So cute. But yeah, that's that's what I got from Stitch Central. That place is awesome. If you are even remotely kind of sort of at all close to there, pay them a visit. Fantastic, amazing yarn selection. Even Nate was like, this place is crazy. And I was like, yeah, it sure is. So that was totally awesome. That worked out that way. And obviously you can see I bought a lot of crap. And I think that's it, honestly. If I have not hit an hour by now, I'm sure I will by the time I have put in that footage of socks quilt and everything. So if you are still watching this, like God bless you. Thanks for sticking around. I am absolutely starving. I'm not even gonna do my usual like admin wrap up stuff. I'm just gonna go make a sandwich. Really hungry. So thanks for hanging in there. I will see you on the next episode whenever that is. Thanks for hanging. I'll see you next time.